Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we are going to do another Election Night in America 2022. Tonight, Chuck Schumer, Senate Majority Leader, faces off against Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in the battle for control. Taking a look at our swing state polls from the Senate race, we are from our Senate races, we're also going to be doing gubernatorial elections as well, which we'll take a look at in a second, but right now, these are the four most important Senate races. Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. In Arizona, Mark Kelly has a four-point lead over his challenger. In Georgia, Herschel Walker has a one-point lead over incumbent Democrat uh, Raphael Warnock. In Pennsylvania, Connor Lamb holds a five-point lead over Ryan Costello. In Wisconsin, Sarah Godlewski holds a surprising six-point lead over incumbent Republican Ron Johnson. Now, in our important gubernatorial elections, as you can see, Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin are eternally important in this midterm, but we also are welcoming Kansas to the mix. Kansas uh, is a state where there is an incumbent Democratic governor, Laura Kelly, who is very endangered uh, being in a Republican state, uh, where Jeff Collier leads her uh, by 3% in, in our latest polling aggregate in Arizona. The Democratic ch uh, challenger, challengers in Arizona and Georgia, uh, Katie Hobbs and Stacey Abrams, uh, both younger women, trying to unseat uh, or try to trying to flip these Republican seats are currently leading and then in Wisconsin incumbent Democrat Tony Evers will be narrow two point lead. Now the country is pretty split on whether the whether we're going on the on the wrong track or in the right direction. With 49% of Americans saying we're, we're on the right we're going in the right direction compared to 48% who say we're on the wrong track. 52% uh, of Americans that voted today view Joe Biden favorably, compared to 44% who, who disapprove of the president's performance. So these are pretty good numbers for Biden. They're not amazing, but they're still pretty good. So according to the UAP data desk, around 40% of voters said the economy was their most important, was their most important issue, compared to 27% who said healthcare was their most important issue, 22% said, said race in America was, was their most important issue, and 12% said uh, listed other issues as the most important issue. So, it's now 7 o'clock on the East Coast, and the polls have just closed. In the first six dates, let's get started with our first projections of the evening. So, it's now 7 o'clock, we're going to do our Senate projections first, then we'll get to the gubernatorial races. So, in Vermont, Patrick Leahy, who decided to run again for his Senate seat, is going to win re-election to the U.S. Senate, defeating Lord Zupan. Uh, in Vermont, as you can see, we'll, and I'll be showing county maps throughout this election night, but in Vermont, Right now, uh, Lauren Zupan has the lead in only one county, that's Orleans County in the north. In Indiana, we can reject this as a whole for the Republican Party. Todd Young will win this seat. He has defeated uh, State Senator J.D. Ford. And then going to Kentucky, Senator Rand Paul has been re-elected, defeating Charles Booker. Booker ran a pretty good campaign. He raised a lot of money, but it's not going to do much for him. He actually has the lead right now, but it's mostly because these Democratic areas have much more vote reporting than these more rural Republican areas. But but it's very you know right now it's 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 eternally likely that Rand Paul does come back and defeat Booker. In South Carolina, another major projection: Tim Scott has been re-elected to the U.S. Senate, defeating Crystal Matthews. Um, as you can see, Matthews does have a lead right now, but that lead is very likely to uh, fade away. In Georgia, it's currently too early to call the winner of that race. Raphael Warnock currently is trailing Herschel Walker right now, but again, only 16% of the vote is in. So, we it's now 7 o'clock, we have some important gubernatorial projections to make. And first, in Vermont, we can project that Governor Phil Scott has been re-elected to another term as governor. He, he is an, uh, a liberal Republican governor in a very blue state running against Dave Zuckerman again. Uh, Scott going to win every county by pretty solid margins. He's a very popular governor, even though he's a Republican in the state that Joe Biden won by only 30 points. In Georgia, uh, it's currently too it's, it's currently too close to call in the state of Georgia. Again, this race is a very competitive race where we've seen a lot of drama on both sides. Stacey Abrams, Brian Kemp facing off in potentially the highest profile gubernatorial election of this midterm. Right now, Stacey Abrams is trailing Kemp and actually running ahead of Raphael Warnock, but again, it's we're not sure where these races are going to end up by the end of the evening. So in South Carolina, it's currently too early to call the winner of that race. Joe Cunningham, the Democrat, trying to unseat Henry McMaster, the Republican. This race is not expected to be competitive, but Cunningham has had good polling numbers and good fundraising numbers that he upset is not completely, uh, it wouldn't be completely shocking, although make no mistake, McMaster is still favored at this point with around half the ballots counted. So as you can see, Joe Cunningham does have a pretty solid lead, even though uh, over half the votes been counting, he still maintains a, over a 16% or a, over a 17% lead over 
Henry McMaster, which is, is very interesting right now. Again, we'll keep you posted on this race, and of course, McMaster could come back, but Cunningham off to a strong start in South Carolina, which could show good sense for Democrats in the future. Now, uh, in our Senate balance of power, we have three seats so far called for Republicans, and we'll show you the breakdown as the night progresses as we get closer to projecting a Senate majority for either party. But um, right now, we've called three seats for the GOP, one seat for the Democrats, Georgia, too close to call. And in our governor's races, the polls only closed in three states that had gov governor's races uh, at 7 o'clock. We called a Vermont for Governor Phil Scott, and, and then in Georgia, South Carolina, too close to call there. It's now 7.30 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have some major projections to make. Uh, so first, 7.30 p.m. Senate projections, we can call North Carolina too early to project a winner here with 7% of the voted Mark Walker currently trailing Sherry, or currently leading Sherry Beasley, excuse me. Um, this race is very competitive. Beasley could make history as being the first black woman to be elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of North Carolina. Walker, he, he, he needs to hold the seat for the GOP. It would be key for uh, Mark Walker to hold the seat. Uh, should Mark Walker lose tonight to Shelly Beasley, it, it, it's, it, it's a very bad sign for the GOP, um, and they need this seat by all means. In Ohio, Tim Ryan, another important seat for the GOP. Josh Mandel currently trailing Tim Ryan, but again, the areas that are coming in are very Democratic. So, it's now 7.30, we're going to do some governor projections right now. We can project that in Ohio, it's going too early to make a call. Here, Nan Whaley, the mayor of Dayton, trying to unseat incumbent Republican Governor Mike DeWine. Whaley has a very early lead. So, it's now 7.30 again. I, I know I've been saying that a lot, but 7.30, seven balance of power right now. Uh, we, we've called three races for the Republicans, one for the Democratic Party, and then three, two votes to call. In our governor's balance of power, we've only called one race, that's Vermont. So, going over to our 8 p.m. poll closings, it's again now 8 o'clock on the East Coast. We can project, uh, we can make a, actually a lot of projections right now. So, first of all, uh, for Senate projections, we can we can project that Richard Blumenthal will be re-elected to the Senate from Connecticut. Uh, as you can see here, currently has a very early lead, but that lead's only going to expand. In Illinois, another critical vote for the Democratic Party, Tammy Duckworth defeats Bill Brady in the state of Illinois. In Maryland, Chris Van Hoeven re-elected to the U.S. Senate. Taking a look at Alabama, we are, gonna, we are now going to go over to our GOP projections in Alabama. Mo Brooks, this is an open seat, or vacated by incumbent Republican Richard Shelby retiring. Mo Brooks uh, winning uh, this election, becoming a senator from the state of Alabama. Uh, and in Missouri, Eric Greetens, this, there was hope for the Democrats to uh, win this race. Greetens having a lot of uh, scandals and... The Democrats potentially running a former Governor Jay Nixon, but they, they ended up running Quentin Lucas, who uh, his campaign really struggled to gain traction early on, and Eric, and Eric Greitens is going to win the Senate seat. So, going over to Missouri, our current county map, as expected, the Democrats are currently winning early on, but again, it's still very, very early. In Oklahoma, James Lankford re-elected to another term as Senator. Uh, Donald, Donald Trump endorsed him, and he won his primary here, Oklahoma. Uh, you know, a very red state. In fact, right now, Langford's winning every county. Um, in Florida, however, going over to our two close to call state, Stephanie Murphy currently leading Marco Rubio, but only 7% of the vote has been counted here. Uh, in New Hampshire, this is another high-profile race that we've been talking about the whole election cycle. Chris Sununu ended up running for this race after a little skepticism from his side. Uh, he will. Uh, he's currently running to try to unseat Maggie Hassan, the incumbent Democrat, who he is currently leading, but again, very early on. Right now, and in Pennsylvania, another huge Senate race. Ryan Costello, the moderate Republican, going up against a more moderate Democrat, Connor Lamb. This is a key race, and you know this race really could decide composition of the Senate tonight. So again, in, in Pennsylvania, right now, Connor Lamb has a very early lead over Costello, but again, still very early, and the areas that are coming in are definitely Democratic leaning. So now, eight o'clock on the East Coast, we have some gubernatorial projections to make. In South Carolina, Henry McMaster will be reelected. He has defeated. Uh, Joe Cunningham. Cunningham had hope early on. He did better than expected in a lot of these majority black areas that came in first, but nevertheless, still going to be a state that that's going to be a Republican hold. Uh, in Ohio, Mike DeWine has been uh, re-elected as governor. They're defeating Nan Whaley. There was hope for Whaley, but again, her campaign did kind of struggle to gain traction, as I mentioned, with some other Democrats in the Midwest. They had a little bit of trouble. She had trouble fundraising as well, and she's going to end up losing this race. In Maine, however, we can project Janet Mills will be re-elected as governor, uh, defeating Paul LePage, the former governor of Maine, easily. LePage had some scandals. He tied himself too closely to Trump. 
and as a result that did not pay off in a state like Maine. In Maryland, John King has been re-elected governor, defeating, um, he has defeated Robin Ficker, excuse me, I uh, had a uh, mental bl uh, block there. This is an open seat, this is actually a gain for the Democratic Party because Larry Hogan, the incumbent Republican, ended up retiring. Um, Daniel McKean, Rhode Island, again, McKean never actually elected, he was the lieutenant governor over, over uh, under G Gina Raimondo, who was then chosen for a job in the Biden administration. Um, McKee has been re-elected, uh, re-elected, no, he's really been elected, but he's still the incumbent, so he's technically been re-elected, defeating Alan Fung in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, and then in Alabama, Kay Ivey, the Republican, re-elected governor, she actually ran unopposed, so she received uh, essentially all the votes. There are a few write-ins, but the Democratic Party did not receive a single vote in the selection. Uh, in Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, the Republican governor, re-elected as expected. He's currently doing very well, and uh, he has significant crossover support from Democrats in the state. In Oklahoma, Kevin State, who had a tough, uh, he, he an uphill battle, he actually had a tough battle for uh, his first election 2018. He only won around 12% in 2018, which is pretty bad for a Republican in Oklahoma. He's now going to win this race. He's actually trailing in Oklahoma County, which is where Oklahoma City is, but other than that, he's doing very well uh, across the state. In Tennessee, Bill Lee re-elected as governor uh, of, of, of the state of Tennessee. And going over to our two list to call, in Connecticut, Ned Lamont, who's been a very unpopular governor for quite some time, was nearly re-elected in the blue wave of 2018. Republicans have had the rise in flipping the seat. It could be a possible upset. We'll have to see uh, what happens. Currently leading uh, Demis Clarides, the Senate majority, the, Senate, the, the, the Connecticut State Senate minority leader. In Florida, Charlie Crist trying to unseat Ron DeSantis. Uh, originally, his bid was met with skepticism, but the polls have narrowed in. Most have this race as a pure coin flip between DeSantis and Crist. We'll have to see where it ends up at the end of the night. But Charlie Crist right now leading Ron DeSantis, although again, uh, m most votes have, have yet to be counted. In Illinois, J.B. Pritzker, the incumbent Democrat, trying to fend off a bid from moderate Republican Adam Kinzinger, who has uh, kind of distanced himself from Donald Trump in the G in the mainstream Republican Party today, trying to uh, have that uh, crossover support from Democrats that he needs to unseat J.B. Pritzker. Uh, and now going over to the state of New Hampshire, Joyce Craig trying to flip the seat. Uh, Sununu, who is the incumbent governor, who is actually eligible to run for another term, uh, he decided to run for Senate. So uh, we have an open seat in New Hampshire. Kelly Ayotte, the former senator, trying to uh, win another statewide race in New Hampshire. She faces a tough bid from Manchester Mayor Joyce Craig. Uh, right now, Joyce Craig has the lead, but again, a lot of votes still out there. In Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro currently leading Lou Barletta in this uh, competitive gubernatorial race. Shapiro, of course, the attorney general. Lou Barletta actually did run for Senate in 2018. Thank you, but he lost to Bob Casey. So, Senate balance of power as of right now, we have called, uh, we have called a six races for the GOP, and we have called only four for the Democratic Party. Although, again, right, the Democrats came into this night with with an advantage. We'll switch, uh, and, as, and as the night progresses, we'll start showing you the balance of power in the Senate. In our governor's map, we still have a lot of races that have yet to be called, even in some safe states like you know Connecticut, Illinois. Think of you know think of the states as safe blue states, where we haven't called their governor races yet. So. Interesting night so far. No indication of being waived for either party, though. So we uh, the polls just closed in Arkansas, but first we have some major projections from the Senate. We can project that Ohio will go for Josh Mandel. This is a key hold for the GOP. If Tim Ryan found a way to win this race as a Democrat, Ohio would have been very bad news for the Democratic for the Republican Party, and he's going to uh, right now with around 80% of the vote in Josh Mandel, and they're going to expand that two-point lead he's currently nursing. In Arkansas, John Boozman has defeated Jack Foster. Um, as expected here, no surprise from the state of Arkansas, going for a Republican. In, uh, in, it's now 8.30, again, we have some major projections in, in Connecticut, Ned Lamont, uh, holding this seat for the Democratic Party, most expected him to win, but there was an outside chance of a GOP upset due to Lamont's low approval ratings, but in a blue state, enough have to hold. In Illinois, another, uh, hold for the Democratic Party in a blue state, J.B. Pritzker re-elected as governor of the state. Defeating Adam Kinzinger. Kinzinger outran Trump and most Republicans on the ballot this year, but still not enough to unseat Pritzker. In Arkansas, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has won this seat. This is an open seat being vacated by Asa Hutchinson, the incumbent Republican governor. She ran unopposed. She's going to win this state very easily. Uh, so, yeah, Senate balance of power. I'll show you that. We call Arkansas and Ohio for the GOP. And then we just called Arkansas for the, on the governor's map for the GOP. So, 9 o'clock. We have some key battlegrounds that just closed their polls, and we're going to show you the results from those states right now.
we can project in Florida. Marco Rubio has won re-election to the Senate. The polls closed here over an hour ago. We're now going to project Rubio has defeated Stephanie Murphy. So interesting county makeup of, of Florida. Uh, Rubio right now is on track to flip two counties. Those are Pinellas and Seminole counties. Those were Biden counties in 2020. Rubio needed them, uh, and he uh, got them. And he is on track to outrun Trump in the state of Florida. Uh, he's also only losing by around eight in Miami-Dade County and is uh, trailing Murphy by less than a point in Duval. Keep you updated on that race, but right now you can know Rubio won there. In Colorado, however, Michael Bennett, as expected, defeating Daryl Glenn in the state of Colorado. We can also project that Chuck Schumer has been re-elected to the U.S. Senate, defeating Wendy Long. Uh, originally, there was talk about the Republicans trying to beat Schumer out, but, you know, in, in a state like New York, it's going to be very hard for them to do so. Uh, and, we'll get, and we'll get you an update on the governor's race very soon. But in New York right now, we can project uh, that Chuck Schumer has won a re-election to the Senate. Interestingly enough, he actually lost the Buffalo area uh, significantly. He, he, he did pretty poorly there, but everywhere else he did, very, uh, he did very well, and he maintains the popularity he enjoyed when he won re-election six years ago. In Kansas, Jerry Moran won or has won re-election, defeating Sharice Davids, who ran for the seat after she was drawn out of her uh, congressional seat and drawn into a very safe Republican district, so she decided to run for Senate, but she's going to lose to Jerry Moran. In Louisiana, John Neely Kennedy defeating Antoine Pierce in the state of Louisiana, as expected here. We can also project that in North Dakota, John Hoven has been re-elected to the Senate. The state of North Dakota uh, right now ahead by uh, over 17%. Uh, in South Dakota, John, uh, John Toon defeating John Heckerman, who is the currently uh, the Senate Minority Leader of the state of South Dakota. The Senate race, obviously, as expected, uh, he, uh, hold of the GOP. Now, in Arizona, Mark Kelly leading the other Mark, Mark Bernovich, who is the current, or the former Secretary of State of Arizona. Uh, Kelly leading by around uh, 8%. In Wisconsin, this is another key race that we talked about earlier. Ron Johnson currently trailing so the Democratic State Treasurer Sarah Godlewski. Uh, and it's now 9 o'clock. Uh, again, uh, we want to show you our, our, our governor projections, and we're going to do that right now. So in New Hampshire, we can project this is a gain for the Democratic Party. So far, they have gained two gubernatorial seats. Um, they won Maryland, and they're going to flip another Northeastern governor seat. And it's Joyce Craig defeating Kelly Ayotte in this race. Uh, it, it was close, but with nearly all the votes in, Craig is only going to expand that lead. In Georgia, this is another huge Democratic pickup. We did not expect to call this till earlier until later in the night, but Stacey Abrams, she uh, she really, she got the turnout that she needed from black voters, she got the turnout she needed from suburban voters, and the, and the more Trumpian Republicans, they didn't really come out for count the way he needed, and Abrams only going to expand that lead as the night goes on, she is going to win this race. In Colorado, Jared Polis, as you can see, has been re-elected as governor, defeating our being the Republican nominee here, he will win the state of Colorado. In Minnesota, Tim Walls, he was, he was expected to face a tight race early on, but uh, the GOP ended up running very unpopular candidate Mike Lindell. So Lindell uh, not doing very well right now. Tim Walls enjoying strong support from all across the board. In New Mexico, Michelle Lujan Grisham going to defeat Jay Block in the state as expected. Lujan Grisham has been re-elected to another term as governor of the state of New Mexico. In New York, uh, Bill, Bill de Blasio did primary Andrew Cuomo after uh, he said that he mishandled the COVID-19 pandemic and had uh, multiple women accuse him of sexually assaulting them. So, uh, Bill de Blasio has won this race. Again, he won the primary, went on to win the general election quite easily uh, in the state of New York. Now, in Nebraska, we can project Brett Lindstrom. This is a seat uh, that Pete Ricketts, who is the incumbent governor, uh, vacated. And Brett Lindstrom is going to uh, win the seat again, as expected for the, Repub for, the, uh, for the Republican Party, defeating Bob Christ in the state of Nebraska. In South Dakota, Christy Noem uh, re-elected as governor uh, in the state of South Dakota. Uh, there was talk about Billy Sutton running again, but he decided against it after Noem's approval ratings uh, started climbing in early 2022. In Texas, Greg Abbott, there was hope for the Democrats to win this race um, after, in February 2021, after Abbott uh, was er, taking a lot of heat, really, for his handling of the winter storm that really hit Texas quite badly. But uh, since then, uh, it's, it's been pretty smooth sailing for the governor. He's going to win re-election here. Uh, in Wyoming, Mark Gordon uh, winning uh, the governorship. I don't really know what that means because, like, it's it's just like winning the governorship of an imaginary state. But whatever, good for him. Um, I guess it's cool. 
uh, he can win there. In Arizona, it's apparently too early to call a winner there between Katie Hobbs and Paul Gosar. We'll keep you updated on that. We can also project that it's too early to make a winner or to call a winner in Kansas. Laura Kelly uh, currently leading Jeff Collier, but again, we still have to make a lot. We still, still have to see a lot more votes come in. In Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer currently leading James Craig, although again, Craig really, uh, you know, he knew that he would have to uh, make up these this early deficit with rural votes, so we still don't really know who's going to win this race right now. In Wisconsin, Tony Evers uh, leading Sean Duffy very early on, but again, and I'm saying again a lot, but we need to wait for these votes to come in. Evers, uh, right now he's leading, but that could change. So, showing you this, uh, showing the Senate balance of power, we have 42 seats for the Democratic Party at this hour, 43 for the Republicans. Now, in the governor's uh, map, it's a dead heat. 18 seats belong to the Democratic Party, 18 belong to the Republican Party, and we will keep you posted. We still have not called most of our crucial races yet. So, it's now 10 o'clock on the East Coast. We've got some major projections to make. First of all, in the Senate, we can project a key. A, this is a critical hold for Democrats. Raphael Warnock, re-elected to the U.S. Senate from the state of Georgia, he has won this race. His lead right now is about 0.6%. The lead's only going to grow as the night progresses. In Arizona, another key hold for Democrats. Mark Kelly has defeated Mark Burnovich. There was hope uh, of Burnovich potentially pulling off an upset here against Kelly, but Kelly uh, really uh, squashing that hope for the GOP of flipping the all-important seat of Ar state of Arizona in the Senate. Uh, so Mark Kelly currently leading Burnovich. The lead's only going to grow as the night goes on. However, in New Hampshire, we have a gain for the Republican Party. This is huge. Uh, you know, the Republicans, they either needed a gain in a state like New Hampshire or they or they needed to uh, win a state like Georgia or Arizona while not losing any seats. Uh, New Hampshire certainly helps them out. They now have another path to victory after winning New Hampshire with Sununu. Uh, so Sununu are going to unseat Maggie Hassan. So we'll, we'll, that's really a big uh, projection uh, for the Republican Party right now. They still have hopes of taking the Senate, although... Uh, having called Arizona and Georgia for the Democrats just now, uh, those hopes a uh, little slimmer than they were a few minutes ago. In Iowa, we can project, as expected, Chuck Grassley, who is 87 years old, or 88 years old, uh, has been re-elected to the U.S. Senate, defeating Cindy Axney. Um, he is, is, is actually going to win Polk County. It looks like he's currently uh, losing in Johnson County, which is the bluest county in the state, but... Uh, we'll keep post on that. Grassley hoping for a, a sweep of all of Iowa's counties. In Utah, Mike Lee has one re-election as expected there. Uh, no surprise out of the state of Utah. We can also project Nevada currently too early to call Catherine Cortez Mosto trailing Adam Lax, although though, to be fair, I think the vote is in. It's from a very Republican area of the state. Uh, and it's now 10 o'clock. We want to show you governor projections, but first we can project that Josh Shapiro will hold the seat for Democrats. This was an open seat. Shapiro needed a, uh, the Democrats needed to win in Pennsylvania. Shapiro going to win this gubernatorial election. And as you can see, he did very well in the Philly suburbs and uh, you know, made, some, made some interests with the working class. Uh, so that helped him win there. In, in Florida, Ron DeSantis re-elected as governor of the state of Florida, defeating Charlie Chris. There was an outside chance of a Chris upset, but Chris actually did a little better than people thought. Nevertheless, DeSantis is going to win the state of Florida. In Kansas, this is a gain for Republicans. Laura Kelly is going to be heading home after being defeated by Jeff Collier, the former lieutenant governor of Kansas. Uh, Collier actually came close to beating Kobach in the 2018 primary. He lost by only 600 votes to Kobach, but he will not be denied this time as Collier currently leading in Kansas. That lead certain to grow as the night progresses. In Iowa, Rita Hart, who infamously challenged the result of Iowa's second district, she only lost by six votes in 2020 from an unseat Kim Reynolds. Uh, right now, Hart has a narrow lead. In Nevada, Steve Sisolak trying to hold on against popular Congressman Mark Amodi. So, 46 seats for the Republican Party in the Senate at this hour, 44 for Democrats. Again, the Republicans need a pickup somewhere, or they need to hold. Uh, all three of Wisconsin, uh, of Pennsylvania, North Carolina for a majority in the Senate, but we will have to uh, see what happens at the end of the night. And again, 19 seats for the Democrats, 21 for the Republicans. On the map, Kansas should be red, though. We apologize for that error. Again, uh, I, uh, I'm going to throw my graphics team under the bus here. Kansas should be filled in as red. So, it's now 11 o'clock on the East Coast. We can't project uh, in, in the Senate. Uh, we can project Connor Lane. This is a gain. This is Huge news for the Democratic Party. Very happy right now uh, are the Democrats because Conor Lamb has just defeated Ryan Costello 
And now with that being said, the Republican Party needs uh, to essentially win every battleground Senate race that we have yet to call. Uh, you know, they had a path through Pennsylvania that would have made it a lot easier for them, but without Pennsylvania, with Costello losing tonight, uh, Connor Lamb taking down Ryan Costello, that now uh, that path has gotten a lot harder for them. And right now, Connor Lamb beating Costello by just under 2%. In North Carolina, however, this is helpful for the GOP, but nevertheless expected. Mark Walker winning there, defeating Sherry Beasley. There was an out, there was hope for Beasley, of course, in a state like North Carolina, but she was never favored to win this race. In California, Alex Padilla, uh, right now, a winning re-election to the Senate. Uh, he actually ran against another Democrat. Uh, he is going to win that race. And in Hawaii, Brian Schultz, incumbent Democratic Senator, re-elected there. We can also project that in Oregon, Ron Wyden, the popular Democrat, re-elected to the Senate. In Washington, Patty Murray re-elected to the U.S. Senate. And, of course, in the state of Idaho, as expected, Republican, uh, Republican Senator Mike Crapo re-elected there, winning easily. So, it's now 11 o'clock again. We have uh, some important governor races that we need to call. In Arizona, Katie Hobbs defeats Balgoza. This is a gain for the, for the Democrats. They're having a pretty good night on the gubernatorial front, to say the least. They've picked up a lot of key races, including Arizona, which is huge for them. And it's another part of the Sunbelt surge we're seeing right now. In Michigan, this is a hold for the Democrats. We just had a crucial gain for them. They're going to hold the state of Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer has defeated James Craig in the state of Michigan. Uh, he's, she's going to win by a little over 3% at this point in time. In California, Gavin Newsom winning re-election. There was a failed recall attempt against him in 2021. Caitlyn Jenner could not defeat Gavin Newsom. So uh, Newsom uh, beating Paul Coat uh, for his second term as governor in 2022. And then in Hawaii, Kirk Caldwell uh, has defeated uh, Andrea Tapula, uh, who is the current Senate minority leader of the Hawaii State Senate. So again, in Hawaii, all blue there right now. In Oregon, Ted Wheeler, th this is a seat being vacated by incumbent Democrat Kate Brown, who is term limited. So Ted Wheeler going to win this race in Oregon. 54% of the vote going for Wheeler, enough to uh, for us to project the race for him. In Iowa, Kim Reynolds re-elected as governor. They're defeating Rita Hart, as I mentioned earlier. In Idaho, Brad Little currently defeating uh, Michelle St Stennett. The uh, Senate, Senate majority, Senate minority leader, excuse me, of the Idaho State Senate, obviously representing the Democratic Party there. So, we, uh, it, it's, it's really going to come down to whether the Democrats can hold Nevada or pick up Wisconsin. They're probably not going to win Alaska, although at this point, you know, this midterm's been so crazy they wouldn't count anything out. But 49 seats for the Democratic Party, 48 for the GOP. They need to hold their lead in Wisconsin, um, hold Alaska, and then pick up Nevada. So they need to win. Um, they need to run the table to for, to for to, have, to win the Senate. Uh, in 2022, the Democrats only need to win one more race, although they, they'd like to have that last one. They'd like to win at least two of these three races because it gives them a lot more flexibility. 24 seats for the for, for the Democratic Party uh, right now in the National Government Association. 23 for the Republican Party. Um, we have yet to call Wisconsin and Nevada on both the Senate and the Governor front in Alaska. The polls have yet to close there. But the polls just closed in Alaska. We can project... First of all, we're going to project that in Nevada, Catherine Cortez Mosto has won. Uh, this is huge news for the Democrats, and they are going to retain that Senate majority that they won narrowly in 2021 with those Georgia runoffs. The Democratic Party has won the Senate majority. This is huge. Wisconsin, too, too close to call. Alaska, too early to call uh, but right now, but huge news for the Democrats winning Nevada. And just to go back to Alaska, it's a three-way race. We have Murkowski running as an independent. A, uh, actually, as a write-in, uh, as, as in write-in independent, who is going to caucus as a Republican. Uh, so, should she win, it, it's the Republican Party's uh, seat. Uh, then there's Al Gross, the Democrat, and then the Republicans running someone else. So right now, Gross has the lead, but only one percent of the vote, and we really have no idea how that's going to look by the end of the evening. And uh, again, we now have some governor projections at 1 a.m. M Mike Dun, Mike Dunleavy has won. Uh, defeating Tom Begich, the m minority leader of the Alaska State Legislature. Uh, Dun Dunleavy uh, de defeating Begich. I don't know why it says Galvin there instead of should, should say Begich. But yeah, so 50 seats for the Democratic Party in the Senate. We have yet to call Wisconsin or Alaska, but both these states are currently leading towards the GOP. And 24 seats for both parties in the National Governors Association. So really, uh, we'll see how this goes. Right now, Tony Evers, Trailing in Wisconsin. Right now, Steve Sisolak leading in Nevada, so we could see a 
a tie in, in the governors, in the national governors association, which would still technically be a pickup for the Democratic Party, one, a net one pickup. So it's now 2:16 a.m. on the East Coast. We have a major projection in the Senate race. It's that Lisa Murkowski uh, will defeat Al Gross in the state of Alaska. She will win. Uh, we do not have county data yet, unfortunately. We'll show that as soon as we can. As, as we can. Over in Nevada, Steve Sisolak has won this race, defeating Marco Modi. Modi ran a strong campaign, but do, but it wasn't enough to unseat an incumbent Sisolak. In Wisconsin, we can project this as Major Tony Evers has won, giving the Democrats control of the National Governors Association right here that democrats win the governor's association for the first time in a very long time so in the senate you had to call wisconsin the democrats really would like to have that one but in the national governor's association we are all done with 26 seats for the democratic party 24 for the republican party so now it's 10 o'clock on the east coast most of the kids on the east coast have gone back to school uh and we are going to make our last senate call into that in wisconsin sarah goodlewski picks up the seat uh, in, in the dead of night it looked like she was losing but she has slowly but surely came back. She is going to defeat Ron Johnson, although there's almost certainly going to be a recount. And Ron Johnson has tweeted he's not going to concede this race, so this race could continue for a very long time. But right now, celebration for the Democratic Party because they are going to gain a Senate seat. In return, they really should not have gained a Senate seat. The, the, you know, in when the incumbent party uh, has is it, the incumbent party is supposed to lose seats in a midterm. This is supposed to be a right away. But Democrats they took advantage of, of a divided Republican Party. They ran good candidates. And they're going to hold the Senate. They're actually going to gain one Senate seat. You know, a modest gain. This was certainly not a blue wave, but they gained a Senate seat. And they are going to uh, actually pick up the National Governors Association. So, as you can see, current Senate makeup where we have blue states, two, two Democratic senators, red states, two Republican senators. Uh, but in purple states, select few, Montana, West Virginia, Ohio, New Hampshire, and Maine. Those are states that have a Republican and a Democrat in the Senate. Governors Association, National Governors Association. It's it, it's an interesting map um, because there are a few states that have, you know, super super partisan states electing governors of the of the other party. You know, in um, in Louisiana, uh, in Kentucky, uh, 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 those are Democrats representing super red states, and then in uh, in uh, Massachusetts and Vermont, those are Republicans representing super blue states. The Democrats did lose a red state governor, Laura Kelly. When she lost to um, uh, Jeff Collier earlier, or actually yesterday by now, it's it's uh, in the morning on the East Coast. But yeah, so that's it. I I'm, this took a very long time to make, a very long time to record. I'm actually losing my voice. I'm gonna be talking quieter than I was at the beginning of the video. I'm also very thirsty, so it's gonna be fun to get water when I finish recording this video. But that's it. Please share with a friend. Please leave a like. That would be I'd appreciate that so so much. So that being said, thank you. UEP out.